All right, so in the last one, we actually learned how to set up our database here. And in order to actually show this to you, I'll, I didn't get the chance to show you in the last one. We're going to open up it, open it up and set a PHP my admin and drag it over here for you to look at. And if you look at the alt V uh, database, we will have account and we have character. So on each one of these, we have ID and discord. And then down here we have ID, GUID and position. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get this hooked together. And if you can already guess, why do we have Discord in here? Well, Alt-V has the ability to let you log into the server with your Discord identification. So I'm going to teach you how we're going to set that up, and then you'll no longer have to ever worry about storing user passwords. So this is a really neat functionality that comes with Alt-V, and I'm going to explain generally how it works and how we can get it hooked up. So one of the first things that we're going to do is we're going to modify our client side HTML file and we want to make it so that this is our login page. That's what we want to do. So we're going to have this folder called HTML and we're going to make a new one and we're going to call it login. And we're going to take all the data that we put inside of um, the HTML folder except for preact. We're going to drag that right into login. Okay. And we're going to go back to client and then right here we need to update this path with login. So now it's HTTP resource client HTML login and then index.html. And now we're going to take this specific function and we want this to be the very first thing that loads when the player uh, joins the server. So instead of just spawning them outright like we are here, we're going to go ahead and get rid of that little bit of code there. And we're going to remove this set into command as well. And we are also going to move this web view right into this um, spawn player function. Okay. And we're going to actually get rid of the little argument there and make it a blank one. And then down here, we're going to do web view dot focus and then alt show cursor true. And the rest of the stuff that's down here, we're going to go ahead and just remove a majority of that. Okay. So now we're going to use this new web view that we've created and it's inside of client.mjs. Uh, and we're going to make a new, we're actually going to take all the data that's inside of here and we're going to move it into its own file. Okay. So we're going to make a folder. We're going to call this, um, panel. We'll call it panels. Okay. And then inside of panels, we're going to put in um, discord.mjs. Okay. And then right here, we're going to copy all this stuff right here, put it right there instead of discord.mjs. And then our last step is to load this discord MJS file. And the way we do that, it's a little bit different than server side. We do, um, import all as, and we're going to call this one discord from, and it's actually going to be a forward slash client. Okay. And then it's going to be panels and then discord.mjs. And what I like to do to make sure things are loading is inside of here, I usually put an alt log that says discord MJS has loaded. Great. So now we have that all set up. Um, let's go take a look at our login menu. If you recall, there's a bunch of stuff in here that we probably don't really need. So let's go ahead and get this cleaned out and gutted so that we can begin using it as our new login interface. And the simple idea behind this is we're going to have a in a single button that you click and it will immediately log you into the server. So we're going to remove render vehicles. We're going to remove spawn vehicle display name, uh, key down. We're going to remove this event list. Or actually, we're going to remove this whole component will amount all of this right here. Um, we're going to remove this component did mount, this key bind, um, the name and the vehicles for the state. We don't have to worry about state in this instance. And that's about it. So the th only thing that we need here is attempt login. Okay. And with attempt login, we're going to do if alt in window. We're going to do alt submit, alt emit. We're going to do login. Discord. Okay, so that's the event we're going to be calling. 
And then down here, we just need to bind it. So we're gonna make this a button and we're gonna give this a class of um, law or yeah, we'll call it login. And then down here, we're gonna do on click and we're gonna bind the attempt login to this on click property. So we're gonna do this attempt login bind this. So now that it's bound, it will immediately call that when we are in game. And we're gonna make this text here say, log in. And there we go. So that's all ready to roll. And we're gonna head back over into the Discord MJS section after we copy this little bit of uh, information here. And we'll go in here and we're gonna go ahead and add our web view on login Discord. And then we're gonna put it right down here that says function login Discord, okay? And now we will bind that function to this one. And then we can attempt to log in the user. So Alt-V has a lot of different little Discord events. They're not the most straightforward things to use. It actually took me a little bit of understanding to, or a little bit of uh, trying to really understand what was going on here. So on client side, if we just go to the Alt section and we go Discord, you'll actually see a few different things inside of here having to do with Discord. But the only issue is, what order do you use these things? So I'm gonna teach you that. I'm gonna tell you what that is right now. So the specific order that we use is we need to make a interval. And an interval is going to be used to constantly check if the Discord information is ready from the user. So. Let me explain a little bit better. <laughs> so we're gonna make a const here and we're gonna call this interval. And then we're gonna do alt dot set interval, okay? And what an interval is, is something that happens every certain amount of seconds, so to speak. So I'm gonna do this every half a second, okay? So this is constantly looping in between here, here and here every half a second. And we need to look at a few things to make sure um, it's ready. So at the top, we're gonna do <clears throat> interval, or uh, we're gonna call this um, first request equals false, okay? And then down here, we're gonna do if first request has not been defined and if alt.is discord O auth to finished. So if this is not finished and the first request has not been sent, we will do ready or first request equals true. And then we will make our first request for the Discord information. And we do that by doing alt Discord request O auth to. So this makes our first Discord request, okay? And then after our first Discord request, we need to check if it's done. And we can do that by doing this function here. So we're actually gonna copy that. And then if this function is not ready, we're just gonna return. So when we return, it just loops back up to the top, waits for the 500 to come by again, and then runs it again. And then after this point, this is kind of like our is the info ready type of situation. And if it is, then we need to get that information. So we're gonna do discord info or con uh, constant discord info. And then we're gonna do alt get discord o auth to results. <clears throat> and inside of this result, we're gonna get something called a bearer token. And a bearer token is something that we can use to talk to the Discord API to verify that this person actually has the token for the account they're talking about. So if this Discord info is not defined, then this basically means we did not succeed in retrieving the user's Discord info. So at this point, you would probably want to kick them from the server, but that's something you need to emit up to server side. So we're going to skip that for now. Um, so now we're going to do alt 
emit server, and we're gonna pass this information up, but only just the token. So we're gonna do discord, and then we're gonna do uh, token, okay? And then we're gonna pass discord info dot token. Then down here at the bottom, we need to turn off this interval so it's no longer running. So we're gonna do alt clear interval, and it's just called interval, just like that. So now, when this information is ready, after we click the button, it's gonna start processing it, and it's gonna be like, yeah, we're looking, we're looking. Okay, we found the information. And when we find the information, it's gonna beam that token up to the server side. So we're gonna go ahead and copy this here. And we're gonna go over to our server side. So here we are in server.js, and we're gonna remove all the stuff that we left over here on the bottom. And we're gonna move some of this stuff up here so we have some nice clean code. So what we wanna do, or what I like to do, is each, each folder that I make, especially on the side of um, server and client, I like to mirror these folders, if that makes sense. And in order to mirror the folders, I just do like new folder, and then I do panels, and then inside of this panel, I'm going to put, um, we're going to call this, what do we call it? I think we called it login. No, we called it discord.mjs. Okay. So we have discord.mjs on client side and we have discord.mjs on server side. So on server side, we're going to import alt and then we're going to take that command that we just, or that uh, function we just copied, and we're going to turn this to an on client. Okay. And what's the first thing that we get from an on client? I'll give you a second. It is player. All right. So now we have our player here and we're gonna go ahead and make this a fat arrow function just like that. And this is actually gonna be just called token. All right. So now we have our Discord event happening here. So <clears throat> what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and show you what is about to happen? Because there's some more additional, I mean, there's obviously some more steps that are happening here. Um, but I need to console log this to show you it. And we kind of need to get finished with this section, or not this section, but this lecture. So I'm going to go to server.mjs. And inside here, you know, it says, hooray, you connected to your database. Here, we are actually going to import the additional files that we need just inside of this specific function. So what we're doing is called a dynamic import. So if we do import, and we're gonna try and import panels discord.mjs. This may not work the first time, so the pathing on this is a little tricky. So in order to see if this is actually loaded correctly, I'm gonna do loaded discord mjs. I'm pretty sure this is the wrong path, but we'll find out right now. So we're gonna run it. And there it is, we loaded discord.mjs. So that is the correct path. All right, so now that's taken care of. Um, let's go in game. Let's try using our little function and see what happens. So we're gonna go here, we're gonna go reconnect. I'm gonna give it just a moment to see what it does. And it doesn't look like it's gonna be displaying the page to us, as you can see. So we're gonna look into why that might be. So if we go look at the Discord panel, spawn player, ah, that is our issue there. Because we got rid of the function <clears throat> when the player first joins, this is no longer being called. So we need a replacement. So let's talk about client-side events. <laughs> So let's go look at the uh, wiki here. We're gonna go to client side and then events, and we're gonna find a handful of events inside of here. Not all of them are filled out, obviously, but I do know what a majority of these do. So we're gonna do connection complete, and then we're gonna actually replace this on server with just alt on, and we're gonna replace this event with connection complete. So now when the player joins the server and the connection is complete, this web page should load. So let's do a reconnect and we will see what happens.
And it looks like we have an error. Preact is not defined. Okay, so we need to update our HTML login panel. So if we go to the index HTML, you will notice that Preact is now one folder backwards. So we could just do dot dot slash preact.min.js because we might be using Preact for a few other interfaces in the future. So that's why we put it here and not just directly inside of login. All right, so let's do a reconnect again. And there we are. Okay, so this is our <laughs> this is our really bad login menu. It just has a login button. So if I hit login, I now have a pop-up on Discord. And I need to authorize to get any further. So if I hit authorize, and I'm going to go ahead and minimize that, you'll see down here I have received a bearer token. And we can use this bearer token to retrieve the Discord API or the Discord user's information with just this token. So now we have this on server side. And in the next one, we're going to cover how to retrieve that information and then store that information in our database and bind it to character information. So that's all for this one. And I'll see you guys in the next one.